The Second World War has been seen as a black and white war. Until now. Now, for the first time, you will see the Second World War in color. The images are original. The color is real. Nazi rally in the heartland of Germany. Color film reveals the theater of fascism. These vivid images captured the emotion of the German people waiting to see their leader, Adolf Hitler. During these years of Nazi rule, Ruth Andreas Friedrich kept a diary, a testament to this adoration of the Führer. Everybody was so happy and excited. Suddenly a wave of heil swelled and became stronger and stronger towards us. The Führer is coming, some ecstatic bystanders yelled, and a sea of raised arms swayed and tried to catch a glimpse of Hitler. Hitler had been in power for four years. His troops were already waging war in Europe. The civil war in Spain was a dress rehearsal for the Second World War. It was a war that targeted civilians from the air. It was a war of technology and terror, mass atrocity and indiscriminate death. German volunteer troops fought alongside Franco's fascist army to overthrow the elected Republican government. Among the troops was Klaus Kohler from Hamburg. Spain, you wonderful country. I'm proud to help you during your liberation from the Red Hordes so that you can fight on the side of Germany and Italy against the Bolshevism that is undermining the foundations of Europe. From all over the world, people volunteered to defend Spain's Republican government and defeat fascism. Welsh communist Bill Painter was among them. It is when you see all this that you realize what war is all about. It is here that you can feel the terrible menace to France and the people of Britain if the fascists are not crushed at this point. By 1939, Franco and his fascist allies were victorious. The democracies of the United States and Britain had failed to intervene. An opportunity to challenge fascism had been lost. A new world order began to take shape. While war raged in Spain, Britain celebrated its king, country, and empire with the coronation of George VI. Only once or twice in the life of each one of us comes such a day as this. When we know that we're watching history in the making, when we know that Public sentiment regarding the coronation was recorded in a survey. Procession begins to pass. Surprised to find lump in my throat and tears in my eyes. It was a wonderful sight to see the soldiers outside the abbey. I've never seen anything like it before. The state coach, surely the most beautiful vehicle in all the world. It crosses Trafalgar Square and a hundred thousand faces are turned towards it and a hundred thousand throats voice their loyalty. I felt tearful at the sight of the mounted escorts from distant parts of the world, the Indians, the Australians. It affected me to think that England's influence reached so far. Last coronation, I'll see. I'm 77 years old. I was 30 years under King's colours and I wouldn't change a thing. Best country in the world. I became very irritated with the red, white, and blue decorations. But I was surprised how much I responded to the atmosphere of the crowd, the cheering and all. I felt a defiant pride and thrill in belonging to the Empire. 
which in ordinary life, with my political bias, is just the opposite of my true feeling. One sees how very dangerous all this is. The beliefs and convictions of a lifetime can be set aside so easily. It's too dangerous a weapon to be in the hands of the people in power at present in this country. Shaken by the carnage of the First World War, British politicians wanted to avoid future wars. They wondered if the German leader was someone they could do business with. A year before the coronation, David Lloyd George, Britain's prime minister during the First World War, was invited to meet Adolf Hitler. His aide, Thomas Jones, recorded the visit in his diary. At 4.45, we left the Grand Hotel for the Führer's villa, climbing up and up in powerful cars. He received us himself, bareheaded on the top of the steps, shaking hands with each of us. The meeting took place at Hitler's mountaintop retreat, the Berghof. It was probably half past five when we sat down in a large circle of low and easy chairs for tea and coffee and slices of cold ham and halves of hard-boiled eggs. The Führer himself had what looked like Zwieback, some petty burr biscuits and butter and ate but very little. Several members of the party had brought photographs with them and these Hitler signed. Lloyd George was so taken with the German Chancellor that on his return to Britain, he wrote an article for the Daily Express. I have now seen the famous German leader and also something of the great change he has effected. There can be no doubt that he has achieved a marvelous transformation in the spirit of the people, in their attitude towards each other, and in their social and economic outlook. It is a happier Germany. What Hitler said at Nuremberg is true. The Germans will resist to the death every invader of their country but they have no longer the desire themselves to invade any other land. On the eve of the war in Europe, the United States was emerging from a decade of depression. It was reluctant to get involved in European problems. In June 1939, England's King George VI and Queen Elizabeth visited Washington, D.C. In his secret diary, Harold Ickes, President Roosevelt's Secretary of the Interior, recorded his impressions. The King and Queen made a very good impression. She seemed to be quite lovely and exceptionally good-looking. I had always thought of him as a tall man, but in fact he's not. Although he's thin, the Queen is smaller. They looked like pygmies beside the towering Roosevelt's. I don't know what impression of us the king and queen will carry away, but they had a good press here. From their own point of view, they accomplished some good. Although I doubt whether there'll be any relaxation of our wariness with respect to possible entanglements in foreign affairs. By 1939, Nazi Germany was strong and confident. Hitler had annexed Austria and seized land from Czechoslovakia. In Munich, a festival celebrating German culture was filmed by an amateur cameraman. 18-year-old Josefa Hamann was impressed by the event. It is always a clear, beautiful day on these festive occasions. People call it Hitler weather. It's unbelievable how the city glittered. The whole city was shown off at great expense. 